Okay, but tonight, um, like we've talked about already, uh, we're in week two of our Advent series, and we're talking about peace. But that word peace is one of those tricky words, right? Um, it's one of those ones that, as I'm thinking, I'm, I have trouble defining it. We say things like, it, it's a calm assurance, I'm in the midst of the storm, uh, we have no worries. Um, but um, what also made me think of it was the movie uh, Miss Congeniality, right? Um, so they're like, um, so they're standing up there, and okay, what's one thing that the world needs? And what, what's the typical pageant answer? World peace. World peace. Um, and so I'm glad you all know that too. Um, but um, many times, just like our answers earlier, we think of peace as just this absence of conflict. If only I could get rid of the conflict, everything would be okay. <laughs> Good luck with that, right? <laughs> um, so um, sometimes we mean tranquility or quiet. Um, sometimes it, um, we say it means harmony between these two groups. And so um, if anybody um, Facebook stalks me or Instagram stalks me, y'all know that I post all the time. Um, but back in the summer before I started back at school, I loved going to Del County Lake. Okay? And just walking. Okay? Um, I, I'm probably listening to a podcast or just listening to nature. Um, and just being out there, breathing fresh air. Um, and so um, I'm hearing the birds chirp, the squirrels are just chattering at one another and digging in the leaves, um, and everything seems so peaceful. And so it's not, um, there's not a care in the world, like I said, except my legs getting tired. Okay? Um, but peace is not just that absence of conflict. It's the presence of something better in its place. And so instead of thinking about the worries of life, I can go out there and walk. It's not that there's no noise. It's just I've replaced the noise with something that feels a little bit better to listen to. Instead of worrying about paying bills or health of someone close to me or whatever, I'm hearing squirrels chatter at one another. It's peaceful. Okay? It's not that the noise is gone. It's just that I've replaced it. And so um, the Hebrew word for peace, shalom, you've probably heard of that word before, but in the Greek, um, we, we have our people who, who are learning New Testament Greek every week, and that is erene, uh, erene. And so that occurs about 92 times in the New Testament. And so this this concept of peace. Um, but um, it also means completeness or wholeness. It's not just the absence of conflict, but it means to be complete or whole. And so just looking around us, just from our prayer request list, um, just from the things that weren't mentioned during the prayer request time, we know a few things. Number one, that there's many times when we are not at peace personally, um, that our neighborhood is not at peace, and we wouldn't keep saying we need world peace if we had world peace. Um, and so... Um, we see the evidence of this conflict and we see the evidence of this brokenness all around us. And, and it made me think of Romans 5, 12, where Paul is describing this brokenness and sin stain um, of God's creation. And he said, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And so our world, we're in a state of this sin-stained brokenness due to the fall. Okay, due to um, the fall in the garden described in Genesis, um, we live in a broken world that is messed up. Um, all the way back from Genesis where um, thorns were introduced, pain and childbearing was introduced, um, just turmoil instead of just... Um, taking care of the garden because it's just communion with God, it turns into work. Okay, I tried having a big garden one time. That's not fun. <laughs> it's like purslane just grew everywhere. Um, and I was like, have it. <laughs> you can have it. Um, and so um, it's a lot of work. What, what was once just this ideal of peace and harmony with God walking in the garden, now we're left with this. Um, where instead of harmony with God constantly, um, we, we mess up and we're enemies with God, is what the Bible says. And 
we find our place ourselves in this place of a lack of peace and many times we're crying out like psalm 13 1 says says how long O lord will you forget me forever how long will you hide your face from me i don't know about y'all but there's been times in my life and i'm 32 years old where um it seems like you're just crying out to god how long like how long do i have to keep going through this how long does my loved one have to keep going through this um, we realize the brokenness around us, and even sometimes we feel like God has turned his back on us. Um, but um, I have a habit, and that is I like to try to fix things myself. Right? Do I have anybody else like that? Um, instead of trying to get help, um, I'm going to take care of it myself. And um, we try to fix that lack of peace in our life. We, um, we try to find peace in a significant other. Man, if I just had uh, a spouse, if I just had a significant other, if I, um, dealing with junior hires, if I just had a girlfriend, if I just had a boyfriend, everything would be better. No. Okay. We try to find it in our children. I can't tell you from, from, from academics and athletics how many parents are still trying to find peace um, through their kids and their accomplishments. Um, we try to find it by watching television. We veg out in front of the TV. I veg out in front of the TV and just escape the craziness around me. Um, again, we might even try to find it walking to the other side of Dale County Lake. Um, but with all of these and even others that I haven't named, we realize that we're still not at peace. We're still not whole. We're still not complete. Um, we try to solve the problem, but we realize that these remedies that we use are just temporary. Yeah. Um, when it fades, we're back and we realize that, hey, we're still broken. But the thing is that through sin, we are not at peace. And creation as a whole is not complete and it's not whole. And creation is broken. Our relationships are broken. And in all honesty, we're broken okay like i said last week the the snap crackle pop of my knees when i try to work out i know they're broken okay um they, they hurt okay um and so um i don't know about y'all but the, the cold uh, we, we have our house really cold at night um just because we sleep better but then the the trying to get out of bed just everything snaps crackles and pops and you have to take a deep breath and we have our bed really high so I don't have to stand up to get out of bed I just kind of roll off okay um, <laughs> you don't have to really um, you don't have to put forth much effort you just fall off um, but um, we live in this in this brokenness but what's so awesome is um, in steps our gracious peace making God um, so um, Paul David Tripp, he's, he's different. He's, a, he's an author and pastor. Um, but he, he has a devotional called Come Let Us Adore Him. And um, it's the one that I'm reading through um, right now. But he said, uh, um, but in one of the gorgeous mysteries of God's grace, he looked on his broken, rebellious world with eyes of mercy. Um, he has every right to judge because he's the judge. Um, he's the creator of the law. He's the um, enforcer of the law. He has every right to pass judgment because he is perfect. But in one, I'll just read it again. In one of the gorgeous mysteries of God's grace, he looked on his broken world, his rebellious world, with eyes of mercy. Um, and so in Isaiah 53, 5, the prophet Isaiah um, remember, we talked about it last week. He's prophesying of the imminent overthrow of, um, of Israel by the Assyrians. But he describes Jesus, the Messiah, the suffering servant, and gives us a description of what the death on the cross has done for us. And it says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his, his wounds, we are healed. And so it's, um, 
All of those are important, but really stuck out to me. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And so I pray it all the time. Um, It's just a habit of mine. Um, If I'm praying from the stage or right here, it's talking about reconciliation with God. But God sent Jesus. He looked at this broken and rebellious world. He looked um, throughout the the span of time and saw us and the craziness that we've done and the craziness that we'll continue to do. And God sent his son Jesus to reconcile us to him. He sent Jesus. We were in a state of conflict with God, just like we've talked about how the world is in conflict, just how we've talked about our relationships are in conflict. We were in a state of spiritual brokenness. We were far from complete. But the death and resurrection of Jesus has brought us peace, has brought us completeness, has brought us wholeness. And it it feels weird, but there's this phrase, it's not in my notes, but um, there's an already and not yet aspect. Um, We have been made right with God already. It's awesome. But at the same time, the world around us is still broken. Um, The world around us is still in conflict. And um, so we have this tension, this um, God has made me okay with him. I've been declared righteous, okay, um, through Jesus Christ. Um, But there's still aspects that are still broken. Um, But Jesus said in in John 14, 27, I know I got a bunch of, of scriptures right here, but they're just so awesome. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Okay, so we can have that peace in Jesus and that peace that says, hey, there's nothing to be afraid. See, we can approach God because we no longer have to be afraid. Instead of saying that we're enemies with God, now we go to him as our father. Instead of... um. You approach your enemy different than you do your father. Yeah, and so we have been made right with God. We have that peace. We have that completeness. And Ephesians 2, 14 and 16 states, For he himself is our peace, who made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man instead of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And see, it's through Christ, what um, he's talking about here in Ephesians is it's through Christ that all of us who are different, we have the ability to be united in one body. Um, It's through Christ. It's not through um, political beliefs. It's not through um, we all look the same um, or drive the same cars or we make the same amount of money. It's through Christ that broke down that wall of hostility between us and others, that we might be united, that he's reconciling us to God in one body. Um, and then Colossians 1, 19 and 20, it says, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. So just kind of summarizing all this, and that is that we have no peace in this life without Jesus. It doesn't matter what we put in that blank. If only I had blank, then I would have peace. All of that is temporary. Okay? Unless you put Jesus in that blank, everything else you'll realize that you don't have peace. Okay? It's the same. um, I forgot what the statistics are, but it's um, NFL players who end up broke. Okay? Man, if I can only make it to the NFL. You realize as soon as you're retired a few years later, you're declaring bankruptcy. Um, If only I could get, um, if I can only get this job and make this much money. You get that job. And what do we have a habit of doing? We used to spend this much money when we made this much, but now we spend this much money because we make this much. We end up spending what we earn. It doesn't matter where we're at. Um, if (laughs) If only I had a significant other. Okay. Um, you realize that your peace cannot be found in that significant other. Jesus is our peace. 
Um, Jesus ended the conflict between us and God. He makes us complete. Jesus makes us whole. I forgot what little kid movie it was, but he said, you complete me. Okay. What? E.T.? Was it E.T.? He said, you complete me. Okay. I don't know. Um, so that's what we're like. Um, um, it's, it's, it's not that anything else. It's Jesus completes me. Um, and so, though once we were enemies with God, we are now declared sons and daughters of God. Um, it's wonderful. Um, the Old Testament, the Hebrew people are constantly going and sacrificing animals and dumping this blood on the altar. But we have the blood of Jesus to where instead of continually dumping Jesus' blood on the altar, we can say, okay, that's covered. Now I'm welcome at the table. Now, uh, um, which, which is symbolic of, of communion, of the Lord's Supper. Now, instead of saying, I got to keep sacrificing, keep sacrificing, keep sacrificing. Now, I can come to the table. I can go to the grown-up table. Okay, I don't know if y'all have a kid's table and a grown-up table at Thanksgiving. But I can go to the grown-up table. Um, but it doesn't just stop there. It's that God has called us to be messengers of peace. Um, and Matthew 5, 9 said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Um, there's, there's an author, Layla Gifty Akita. Um, she's from Ghana. Um, but she said that the gospel of peace is too good to keep to oneself. Um, it is too good to keep to oneself. And so um, the question that we have for us is this, what does sharing peace with other people truly look like if we were to apply it? Okay, so we, we have this concept, okay? We were, we were um, enemies with God. We've been reconciled to God. We have peace with God, even though we're still in this broken world. How can we give peace or how can we share peace to other people? And so that it sounds like a Sunday school answer, but the first one's just to pray. Okay, to pray. Um, so Paul in Philemon 4 says, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. So Paul is praying for this guy, Philemon. Um, so one way that we can affect, one of the most effective ways that we can impact others' lives and the world around us is just praying for them. I'm crying out to our Father and saying, God, this is important to me. This is important to you. And through prayer, it's, um, it almost realigns our thought processes. It kind of hits the reset button. When we're going to God over a situation, we start saying, okay, the Holy Spirit starts speaking to us and saying, okay, you know how you said you prayed for peace? Well, go share my peace with that person. Um, it kind of hits the reset button. And even though this is one of my least favorite Christmas songs, okay, so there's Little Drummer Boy. Okay, I don't know if you like Little Drummer Boy, but that's it's not my thing. Okay, um, There's Mary, Did You Know? Okay, I posted that on my Instagram story. Like, I, Yes, she did. Um, Gabriel told her. Okay, The whole song. Mary, did you? Yes, Gabriel told her. Okay, um, But my other, one of my other least favorite Christmas songs is Did You Hear What I Hear? Or Do You Hear What I Hear? Um, and it's um, the last verse. Last verse of that song says, said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. And so um, it, it's rich. It's um, the king. Okay, it's, it's the king declaring to people everywhere to listen to what he says, okay? The child. The child in the manger is going to bring goodness and light. Um, but acts of service. See, it's not just a lot of times we'll, we'll say, okay, I'll pray. But then acts of service, of, of meeting um, people and, and displaying that life of peace, even if it's just for temporary wholeness. Um, and it made me think of when we went through James. In James chapter 2, 15 through 17, uh, where James, the half-brother of Jesus, is talking about faith and action. And he says, If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warm and filled, without giving them the things they needed for the body, 
What good is that? Okay. They're still broken. They're still in need. Um, so also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Um, and so we went through this before honor's reward, but this Christ-like faith, the faith that we have in Christ because he lives in us, um, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, like Galatians 2.20 says, um, is this faith is an active faith. Okay, it's, um, it's almost like saying Jesus, um, he can bring peace, but he didn't put any action behind it. Like, that's messed up, yeah. right? And so um, Christians who are called to be Christ-like, if we just say, hey, have peace, and that's it. Like, the world is still broken, okay? Um, and so our actions should have positive effects on both the temporary and eternal. So looking at someone who's created in the image of God, who's broken and hurting, lacking what is needed and doing nothing, does not show that Christ-likeness. Uh, and so, and it reminded me again, like I've already said, God looked upon this broken creation and sent Jesus. God was active. God was not passive. Um, it's, um, Christ in us should make us active in bringing wholeness to the temporary needs of those around us. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. And the last thing is not just meeting the temporary, but it's also meeting the eternal. Because if someone is hungry and needs food and we give them food, but they're still lost, then that's just temporary. Um, it has no lasting significance. And so through this spirit-led evangelism, we can not only have an impact on the temporal, the temporary, but we can have this eternal impact bringing peace between people and God. Remember, blessed are the peacemakers. And then in Ephesians 6.15, I forgot to put this one in red, apparently. Uh, it says, Paul is discussing the armor of God and discusses the gospel. He describes the gospel as the gospel of peace. He states in verse 15, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Okay, So this gospel is not just, um, is not just hey, except Jesus. It's, hey, um, we're broken. I was broken too. Jesus has made me right with God. He's made me whole. And, and declaring that they can be made whole too. So we got to be ready to share the gospel message with others. And what better time than now? Okay? What better time than now? It's um, people are stressed. Um, people, but whether it's COVID stuff, whether it's sicknesses, whether it's having to work differently for the, through different regulations, and whether it's just the, the hectic um, attitude that we have with um, Christmas coming up, um, what better time than to share eternal peace with others? What better time to say than now to say, hey, let me tell you about this peace that you can have with God, uh, to reconcile others to God. And so we can share with those who are broken, how they can be made whole. We can share the gospel to those who are enemies with God and say, declare and, and say how they can become sons and daughters of God too. It's, it's awesome. Um, but this living in biblical peace means that we have this completeness and wholeness through the death and resurrection of Jesus in our lives, relationships, and world. Um, it's, it is the absence of conflict. But it's also bringing something along with it. It's also the addition of something. So living in biblical peace means that we also should want to share that peace with those around us. Okay. And uh, so just really quick, um, before we look at some of these questions, are there just any um, random thoughts, comments, concerns, observations? Open mic time.
of that brick wall is right there in front of you, and that person won't won't meet you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And even though they may know Christ just as well, they they're still not open to mending. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that peace is hard to get to mm -hmm. when you're in conflict. No matter, we may know the word and we may know his teachings and mm -hmm. living it out. Without God, it's next to impossible. Yeah, and, and it's scary because, you know, say like children, if, if it's one of your children or, you know, just somebody you're really close to, it's heartbreaking mm -hmm. because you want them to know and do what's right, but, um, and you say you try to make that peace with them and it just never comes mm -hmm. after years and years of trying. It, it's really, really hard. It's kind of one of those things where, just praying first that they have peace with God. Yeah. And then as they continue to walk out that peace with God, that it will overflow into all areas of their life. Um, man, that's... It's uh, one of those prayers that I, I know I'm not the only one that mm -hmm. prays for our family. Yeah. You know, it's just hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And you pray for that family member over and over. And it's kind of like, God, are you hearing me? Am I doing something wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, it, Am I missing the mark here? Mm -hmm. But I, I, even I have peace about it, mm -hmm. but I still I'm burdened for mm -hmm. it, and, and it bothers me. I, I don't bother me, and it don't worry me. I bet it does worry me. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Y'all well, know what I'm trying to say. It it <laughs> it makes me think of the. And that feeling you're describing is perfectly okay um, because it made me think of the, the biblical meaning of compassion. Um, this literally comes from words meaning like it's, it's coming from your belly, like it's, it hurts your stomach. Yeah. You're so upset about something. Yeah. And so it's, um, it's like when Jesus saw the multitudes and had compassion on them, he saw their brokenness and it reached him to the core. Okay, it's it's a it's a burden that makes you want to do something, and so um, if you ever get to the place where you no longer have that burden, that's where the problem comes. Does that make sense? Um, so that feeling that you're experiencing of how long, O oh Lord, are you not going to answer? Like Psalm 13, um, it, that that feeling is okay. On that burden for praying for that lost loved one, or that lost friend, that that burden's a good thing. That, that heartbrokenness and, yeah. and um, that feeling is, is, it feels bad, yeah. but it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing that it's there. I think, though, when in that situation for others, too, going back to the peace that, um, that we have, when you know, we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that person that we're praying for, burdened for, mm -hmm. they, they can sense that peace that we have, you know, and, um, you know, we don't, we don't know what, what the outcome's going to be of that or what they see from us, you know, mm -hmm. they may walk away and say, hmm, how do they hold it together like that, mm -hmm. right? well, that's fine, because we have that peace and we have that joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our hope is, like we talked about last week, our hope is not in the here and now, that's our hope is in the later. Um, sometimes we live in a state of what's called delayed gratification. It means that we're going through things that, hey, this is not gratifying. <laughs> well, we realize that one day, right. one day. Uh, I always say, in the grand scheme of things, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody else?
times the circumstances surrounding our lives is where our eyes are fixed, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're not exhibiting that peace to the outside world. We have it within us, but but we're caught up in the cares of life, or the cares that's going on around us. And like Peter stepping out of the boat, he's walking with Jesus. He's okay till he gets his eyes off the Lord and onto the cares of life. It's all around him. Yeah. Then, and it, it's a lack of trust. We have that trust breaks down that we that we trust His grace, that we trust His love, His mercy, that we trust His word. And many times we're distracted by all these other things, and so we miss it ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, I'm gonna skip the first one for now. But you said being distracted by a lot of other things. What are some idols that pretend to offer peace? Because um, that's what they are. We're, we're elevating these things to a peace-giving status when God is the only peace-giver. Um, so just spitballing. It's just, it doesn't have to be I struggle with this. Um, but what are, what are some things that we try to substitute in? Money? Money? If I only had this much, yeah. then everything would be okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just... If I could just learn to love. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been trying. <laughs> but I haven't played. <laughs> like, God, I don't want to play the lottery, but if you would purchase me a ticket, <laughs> and if it would be the winning ticket. <laughs> If you had placed the ticket on the ground next to my car. So sometimes we feel like our job should give us peace and that makes us want to look somewhere else. If only I had that job instead of the one I have. Um, when we fail to realize many times the grass is not always greener. Sometimes it is. <laughs> There's probably a septic tank. <laughs> a septic tank needs to be flushed out. <laughs> Um, just this. Anything can be like that, though. Like you yeah. said, you know, if only I had a new car, if only I had that boat, if only I had that new, you know. Sounding pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're checking all my boxes, <laughs> Sister Angie. Um, yeah, um, let's go back to the, to the first one. And that's thinking about peace, thinking about everything being made right. What is that one thing that you're looking forward to most about spending eternity with God? That everything will be made right. What is that one thing? Instead of 138th graders every day? No more pain. No more worries. Everything this life has to offer is that's, I look forward to that, I think. Yeah, so. And that would be peace. Yeah. Um, depending on what we're dealing with, it could be whether we're worried about finances, we're not going to have to worry about finances anymore. That's right. Um, whether it's we worry with, with sickness and we have um, physical ailments, we're not going to be worried with that anymore. Um, we. Um, we <laughs> uh, we worry about um, loved ones. Yes. So, yeah. thankfully, my mom has taught Megan how to do it, and that is make my Nana's apple tarts. Okay, <laughs> and that is I'm just excited to see my grandfather, who I've never met. 
My grandmother who died when I was seven. Some of y'all know her. And then my other grandmother who's already gone too. Um, it's going to be nice. Um, that brokenness that we feel yeah. will, be, will be made whole. Um, it's nice. And like, like with the candles that, that people light in this tradition, it's every day that grows closer, it gets a little brighter. We realize that, hey, one more day closer. One more day closer. Instead of saying, we, we still find ourselves saying, how long, O oh Lord? But um, we find ourselves saying, um, okay, I made it through yesterday. We're one day closer. Um, with excitement. Uh, any other final um, thoughts, comments, concerns, observations? All right. Looks like we're going to do it for two Wednesday nights in a row, and that is going to be we beat the youth out. Okay. So Pastor Josh lied to you. He said I could have an hour and a half, but I'm not taking an hour and a half. Um, so on the bottom of my notes, um, there's, a, there's a prayer for the week. I understand we all pray in our different ways, but if you're just struggling, uh, need something to pray, just something like quick, it's, it's, this is like the fast food of prayer right here. Uh, but it says, Father, bring me your peace in my life and help me be an instrument of peace. Um, bring, like, help me realize the peace and then help me share that peace with others. And it's going to realign our focus. It's gonna it's gonna reset, hit the reset button. Um, but let's um let's pray. Does that sound good? What's up? Will do. Anybody else? Well, let's pray together. Lord God, we come to you again. Um, first off, we just say thank you again um, for sending Jesus. We, we look back to his first advent. We look back to his first coming where you brought peace. You made this way of reconciliation for us. And we thank you for reconciling us to you. We thank you for um, where we were once enemies. We can now approach you as father because we are your sons and daughters in this room, Lord God. And we thank you for that. But also we look forward to the next advent, the second coming. And we, we say, come, Lord Jesus. And we, just like many times in, in the Bible, we declare, come, Lord Jesus. But at the same time, this isn't a, a white-knuckling holding on to the chair in front of us and doing nothing. It's an active faith. Yeah. It's not passive. It's an active faith while we wait. And I pray that we would be active in prayer, that we would cry out to you over our loved ones and over our friends and over these situations that we looked at tonight. And I pray that we would... Um, continue to meet those temporary needs of those around us, especially during this season where many people are having these temporary needs, uh, whether it's through loss of jobs or um, trying to um, take care of um, Christmas gifts for their, their family members and whatever that situation is. Um, but also let us not forget that uh, we are called to be um, peacemakers, um, instruments of bringing peace to the world. And I pray that uh, we would bring that eternal peace, that we would be messengers on declaring that gospel of peace, going out, being um, equipped with the, with the shoes of the gospel of peace, that you would use us to, to um, show others how they can be made right with you. Um, I pray that you would guide us this week. I pray that you would um, continue to bless us, that you would continue to encourage us. Lord God, in all these things we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.